professional wine drinking people. Today is Wednesday, September 22nd, and we got another pretty we busy week here in the store, but I think we're going to have to postpone our vent, our vintage Spanish tasting from this Friday to next Friday. We've had a little accident with Cheech, and uh, it's been a real busy couple of weeks here, so I just think uh, not too many people signed up at this point. We'll probably do a better, better job with it next Friday, so keep an eye out for that. And uh, we got a great lineup for that. That's going to be the subject of our email today. But first, what I have to drink last night or yesterday, because we've got several segments of what I drank yesterday on this email because we're getting caught up here. But uh, yesterday in the store, we did have one supplier, actually two suppliers. Um, we had Mike Greenfeld from Bulletproof, and he had a few wines from the Veneto, the Rianda Panello Rosso, which is a Corvina Cabernet and Merlot blend. Uh, this wine was pretty nice, a lot of dark cherry fruit, a little plum, a slightly roasted quality to it, a little tobacco spice, um, a nice little value, um, you know, good, nothing great. Uh, the Rand Amarone de Valpolicello is next, and this is a nice entry-level Amarone. You do get a little bit of that clay minerality, uh, which defines Amarone to be some nice sweet black cherry fruit and some fresh flowers. Uh, but again, a little light, uh, not incredibly exciting, but, you know, it's only $33.75. Not that expensive either. For an Amarone, that is cheap. All right, next up, uh, we had Sarah Brewer in the store. I hadn't seen Sarah for years. She is now working for uh, Sierra Madre Vineyards, and... Uh, she had some fiddlehead with her, a friend of hers, so uh, we uh, tasted that wine. The fiddlehead Sauvignon Blanc had a nice grassy note to the nose with some grapefruit, honeydew melon fruit. Uh, really nice and fresh. A uh, good amount of grapefruit and gooseberry fruit on the palate also. And then a nice zesty uh, acidity making the tongue salivate for food. Pretty nice little wine, $20 a bottle. Uh, that's from the San Inez Valley, becoming a hot airy area for Cabernet and Bordeaux varietals like Sauvignon Blanc. Southern California. And then we had the Sierra Madre Vineyard Chardonnay from the Santa Maria Valley. And this wine had a lovely kind of toasty grain note to the nose. Um, this is the coolest area in this area. It's only 12 miles from the beach and uh, the coast. A good hand of peach and apricot-like fruit to this wine. A little candied lemon citrus and a light uh, smoky quality to it. Nice richness on the tongue with uh, lots of peach and ripe delicious tropical fruit there as well. And uh, some pretty firm acidity holding everything together. A note of butterscotch. Uh, very good for wine at this price. $23 and change. And next up the 08 vintage of this wine which to me was a little bit cleaner. A little more refined. Some vanilla bean spice to this. A little creme brulee notes. Uh, some lightly toasted oak spice. A good hand of minerality, maybe a little uh, uh, more precise, and then a little less uh, fruity also, a little less, a little more Burgundian in style. I like this one a little better, and at the same price, hey, 2008 looks great for Sierra Madre Vineyard Chardonnay. All right, next up, the Fiddlehead Pinot Noir, Santa Rita Hills, uh, 728, which is, I guess, the mile marker there or something. But uh, this wine was uh, had a pretty bouquet of black raspberry fruit, lots of fresh flowers, and some black spice, the focus here being on the black raspberry fruit though really nice really forward and seductive velvety on the tongue with a little bit of uh, uh, um, raspberry fruit there some nice freshness and uh, refreshing a little, little black spice on the finish and a uh, very good little Pinot Noir there from the Santa Rita Hills a hot area for Pinot in Southern California and then we had the Sierra Madre Vineyard Pinot Noir from uh, Santa Maria Valley some wild strawberry fruit here rhubarb like fruit on the nose with notes of fresh earth black tea and light uh, smoky bacon notes here as well Definitely a little bit more complex and uh, some nice richness on the tongue and uh, some nice spice on the finish. One of the things we love about Pinot Noir, the spice and the freshness uh, from the acidity. Uh, another trait of Pinot Noir, high acidity. And uh, this wine was really nice and for, it's a lot of stuff, you can find a lot of things in the mid-20s now that are great choices to drink for Pinot Noir. All right, well last night I attended a Syrah tasting at Cafe Max with the Wine Wizards. This is a group that I have done several things with and uh, man, these guys put on some impressive of tastings. The theme last night, well this is why we have a Lewis in front of us, was bring your best bottle and uh, whoever's bottle gets voted as best among the group it gets dinner for free. I don't like to brag but my Lewis took the prize last night and I did have several people come in the store from this uh, group of people and buy some wines for this dinner and I did recommend Lewis to them and None of them bought it, so that's why I kind of brought it last night. But uh, it sold the show. The nose on this wine, just exotic. The oak treatment that the Lewis's use is one of the telltale signs that this wine is from them. Lovely chocolatey, toasty, smoky notes. And uh, we've had this wine at Brown Bag or other wines from Lewis, and a lot of times they get sniffed out because our group knows and loves Lewis wines. And even though this wine was ripe, and Jim, yes, you're right, it was a little fruity. Not sweet, fruity. It has great acidity and balance. It's got lots of everything else. 
That's why I won the show last night, Randy. Good job. All right, but the lineup last night was absolutely stunning, and uh, several of the any of these wines could have won last night. We had the Three Rivers, Chris Ringland, 1996, Barossa Valley, Shiraz, which was absolutely outstanding. Uh, we had the Elderton Command Shiraz, 2004, from the Barossa, one of my favorite wines. We had the Standish, 2002, also awesome, one of my contenders for wines of the night. The Matolo GAM, I think I have most excellent written next to almost every wine on the sheet here. Ollie did an outstanding job last night. He cooked the five-course meal. I had everything but dessert. And, uh, the dessert wine, however, I did taste, man. This uh, Ordonez Essencia, number four. Wow. Exotica is all I can say about that. Uh, orange muscat, apricot nectarine, orange blossoms, uh, honey. Uh, just an exotic array of flavors and tastes on the palate. Uh, this wine was fantastic. All right, well, the uh, European wines, even though I liked them a lot, uh, they, you know, the Chapuche Hermitage 1990, uh, really nice, most excellent. Uh, the Delos Frères Hermitage, uh, you know, a little bit light. The Cote de Languedoc was pretty good, the Porte de Seal, and then the Chapuche Hermitage 1995. I like these wines, but like I said, in a grouping of big wines, most of the wines being from Australia, just one from California, the winner, Lewis Sellers. All right, well, that's what I had to drink. Last night, I'm your host, Andrew Lampasone, for the Wine Watch, signing off, saying, remember, always drink the good stuff first.